Hey everyone, it's Colleen with Made for Mermaids. Welcome to day one of our Oakland sew along. Today we're going to be working on putting together our paper pattern, cutting out our paper pattern pieces, and then cutting out our fabric. So I typically skip over the piecing together the pattern because I try not to show full pattern pieces, just like we ask in the Facebook groups. But I've noticed that a lot of our group members in the salon group are new to sewing or at least new to made for mermaids or patterns for pirates. So I just wanted to show you a little bit about how the PDF patterns work. Now this time around I'm sewing for myself not for one of my kids. So I'm not going to put together the entire pattern because eventually I'm going to have to move to either the floor or a different table because it's considerably bigger than when I sew for my kids. But I will just show you how to get started, how to read the lines, different things like that. So first, you want to make sure you have some kind of hard ruler. Your paper pattern, of course, and then glue sticks. We suggest using a hard ruler because if you use like your measuring tape, those can stretch out over time. And a hard ruler, of course, this isn't going to change. The very first thing you need to do is to check your one inch test square. We always suggest to print a test page first. Just so, like this one, I think the total number of pattern pages is 80, 80 pages. So you definitely don't want to print all those pages and then find out that your scale is off. And I know sometimes people think, oh, it's only off by like an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch. But remember that's an eighth or a sixteenth or whatever it is of an inch off for every inch of the pattern. So depending on the size of your garment, oh, maybe it might not make that big of a difference on a size one, but when you're sewing adult garments, that makes a very significant difference. So when I tell you about the one inch square, this is what I'm referring to. It's on every page. If you noticed that it's not on your pages or on your pattern, you probably have one of the layers turned off. So on all the patterns that have layers, which is nearly all of them, some of Megan's very early patterns don't have them yet, but all the newer ones especially do. So if you notice that you don't have those boxes, you need to go back to your Adobe and make sure that the layer that says all sizes leave checked, make sure that that's checked off. And that's where all those markings, the color key, things like that will be. So first, take your hard ruler, and we'll go ahead and line it up. So you can see my one inch square measures perfectly. If you want, you could check on a couple pages, just in case. Yep, still good. So I'm not going to check all of them because my printer is usually pretty trusty. I typically use my large format printer, and I have a projector, but I have not set it up yet. One of these days, I'll eventually set up my projector. Okay, so once you've checked your one inch square, now we start assembling the pattern. You'll notice also in the one inch square, there's a letter and a number. That's your page number. So next to one A, we would place one B. So we'll just go ahead and double check. So this is 1B, and these are no trim pages, so you don't need to cut along this line, you don't need to trim anything here. You'll notice that my printer does not print all the way up to the edge, that's why it's really good to check the one inch square. And then we'll just match up the guidelines. You'll also see, at the bottom here, let me show you. You'll also see this dotted diamond here, and that's also one inch, so you can match those up as well. So we'll just stick some glue down there. I have to hide my glue sticks from my kids. I have a stash specifically for me, and my kids are always stealing them. If you're not sure how you're doing, you can double check here again. Make sure the diamond is measuring one inch. If it's measuring one inch, you are good to go. 
and we'll go ahead and keep going. So next to 1B would go 1C. If you search in the group, people have come up with all sorts of tricks as well. You can use a light table. We have a lot of people that tape their patterns together, like on their window or their sliding glass doors. So there's lots of ways that you can make it work for yourself. There's also tons of tips on storing the paper patterns. So most of mine are just folded up in those brown envelopes. But the ones I've printed on the large format paper, I just have rolled up. And they're sitting in a box kind of upright in the corner. Okay, so next to 1C, we will place 1D. And just to share a few markings with you. So you'll notice here it says half inch seam allowance. That means that the half inch seam allowance is already included. You do not need to add additional seam allowance. You do not need to trim around the paper pattern piece. You trim right along the dotted edge. I also wanna show you that these lines here, even if you were to print in black and white, the pattern of the line matches up with the patterns indicated in the key. So I cut out, or rather I printed size indigo. That's the only layer I printed and it matches up to that line pattern there. See, I'm already running out of room. Four pages in, and I'm already running out of room. We'll just glue a few more on here. Well, that one almost got glued on upside down. That would have been not good. The more precise you are with this part, the better it will be in the long run. It seems very tedious, and I'll admit that it is. But the more time you take now, the more accurate your pattern will be. For your garment mix. The other thing I'll show you really quick is on some of the patterns, rather than having all the labels stacked on top of each other, on a lot of them it shows the options here. So depending on which option you wanted, this higher line here matches up with the higher neckline in the image. If you wanted the lower neckline, you would use this lighter, more faded image, or line pattern I mean but they're both for size indigo. of putting together your paper pattern pieces. Once you finish with row one, you would start with row two. So it would line up the same way, 2A, 2B, 2C, and so on. And actually, let me, even though it's out of order, I'm just gonna grab 2A really quick so I can show you how we would attach that. Let me see if I can find it here quickly. I'm telling you, it's so much easier to sew for my kids. Okay, I found it though. So this is 2A. Of course, I'm not actually finished with row one, so I'll have to come back and finish that. But this is 2A. I'm going to go ahead and attach it here. So I'll put my glue here along the bottom. And again, we'll match up to these border lines, these gray lines, the solid lines, and then we'll also match up our dotted diamond, our one inch diamond. 
if you notice you're having printer issues, try printing as image. And the other thing is sometimes printers just pull funny, which is really frustrating for those of us trying to be accurate, but it does happen. And then 1B, I'll show you that one really quick as well so you can see how to connect them. So I have 2B, I think I said 1B, but 2B, I'll show you how to attach that one. So we'll put glue vertically, and we'll put another line of glue horizontally. And we're actually attaching it to three sheets. So it's going to attach to 2A, 1B, and then a little corner of 1C. Oh, and I just stuck my finger in the glue. Okay. You can see that's how they attach there. And then, We'll meet back here in just a moment to cut out our fabric. Really quick before we cut into our fabric, I'll just go over the options that I am using in case you want to use the same. So I'm doing the banded top cut line, v-neck, no hood, color block uh, with long sleeve cuffs. So I have my v-neck band. This is cut one on fold. I have my waistband, cut one on fold. Do keep in mind that there are two waistband pieces depending on what size you're cutting. So just pay attention to the pattern and the tutorial. For the color block option, I have three pieces for the back. For the front, I have three pieces as well. They all say color block front. And then for the cuffed color block sleeve, I have four pieces. So the three color block pieces, and then the cuff piece. Let's go ahead and cut out our fabric. To make my life a little bit easier, I actually sorted it by top block, middle block, and bottom block. So for the sleeve pieces, the top pieces, and then I went ahead and put the band pieces or the cuff pieces in the fabric that I was going to cut them out. So for the neck band, the waistband, and the cuffs, I'm going to use the top fabric. So this will just make it a little bit easier so I don't have to pull the same fabric out three times, four times, however many times. So this way I'll cut it all out at once. I'm not going to show cutting all the pieces out because again, try not to show too many full pattern pieces, but I just wanted to show a quick example of what it means to cut fabric on the fold. So you can see I have my fabric laid out here there's the extra fabric this way, and I have folded the fabric onto itself with wrong sides together. And this is my folded edge right here. So in this case, I'm going to take my waistband piece, and the edge that says fold, I'm going to line up along the fold of my fabric. I've already made sure to check the stretch and the grain line. So the stretch is going around the body. The grain line is going vertically. I'll put some pattern weights down just to make sure my pattern doesn't shift. And then we can go ahead and cut it. It's kind of an awkward angle. I'm trying not to block the whole camera. Okay, so here's my waistband piece. You can see it's been cut on the fold. Here's the fold. Eventually we'll stitch these short edges together. We'll get folded in half like that. So we can set that to the side and we'll cut out the rest of our fabric pieces. Just a quick rundown of the pattern pieces. I have my color block back pieces. You can see I put a little clip just to notate that these were the back pieces. I did that on all three pieces. I have my waistband cut on the fold. I have my sleeve pieces, all the color block, color block sleeve pieces cut on the fold. I have my front color block pieces 
The bottom and the middle block pieces are both cut on the fold and then the top color block pieces cut mirror images. That just means they are exactly opposite each other. And then I have the neckband piece also cut on the fold. Make sure that the straight edge is the one that's cut on the fold. And that is it for day one of our Oakland Sew Along. We will see you back tomorrow for day two so we can get to sewing.